and we are back. Um, we, we're back. It's proper sport MMA. Um, before we get started, please like, subscribe, uh, comment, everything on our uh, YouTube channel. We're looking to build this up. Um, we've got going. We've done the last couple of events now. We've really enjoyed it. Um, hope you have too. But let's get into it, Sam. It's UFC Vegas 92. Edson Barboza versus Lerone Murphy. Um, how are you feeling about this card, Sam? Yeah, I kind of like it. Back back to the apex, isn't it? But apart from that, it's not a bad little... Particularly the main card uh, looks decent. Some some good scraps today. I'm, I'm just interested to see how Laurent Murphy gets on. Obviously, an English guy from Manchester. He's kind of had a bit of a stop-start career in the UFC so, so far. Unbeaten. Uh, and, and see how he gets on against a, a living legend in Edson Barboza. So it's, yeah, yeah. Uh, the main event in particular is one I'm, I'm looking forward to, to seeing and how, how Lerone does, you know, against a, uh, an aging guy, but uh, still a top guy in Barboza. Yeah, it's exciting. Um, but we'll start off with the first uh, fight on the main card. We've got Angela Hill versus Luana Pinheiro. Um, where are you going with this one, Sam? Break it down for us. Uh, yeah, an interesting one. Uh, this one, obviously, Angela Hill been around a, a long time, thirty nine years old now, uh, and a eleven and thirteen record in the UFC. But you know, if you look at her, her resume, she she's kind of fought everybody. You know, over the last uh, few few years, a who's who uh, of of wins and defeats uh, as well. So she's always she's always in the fight. She's always good to watch. Three and one in her, her last four. She was on a bit of a skid. Uh, before that, but has, has kind of put a little bit of form back together. Uh, recent wins uh, against Lupita Gudinez, Emily Jacota, and Denise Gomez last time out. She lost to Mackenzie Dern uh, as well um, in in that little run. Uh, all decisions, uh, but she yeah, she does have a good a good output. Angela Hill uh, and coming up against uh, Luana Pineros, uh, thirty year old, who's ranked number nine in the division. She's three and one in in the UFC. I think Angela Hill might be eleven or twelve. Not quite sure where, where she is these days and in, uh, in the rankings. But a chance for Hill to get back into the the top ten by fighting someone you know who's not got the the most you know greatest. UFC record. She lost to Amanda Ribas uh, last time out. Spinning wheel kick uh, started that one off and, and eventually finished her with punches. Uh, she's beaten Michelle Watson Gomez, uh, as she's known now. Uh, split decision. Sam Hughes as well. Unanimous decision. Uh, and uh, her first win in the UFC was a, a disqualification win against uh, Randa Marcos for a, for a, an illegal up kick uh, in that fight. So, yeah, I think this is a good opportunity for for Hill, who I think. You know, is is the beat will be the busier fighter. She's got a good takedown defense. I think Luana will try and mix it up a little bit more, but I'm not sure she's going to be able to against you know, you know a decent veteran uh, in Hill. Um, she's got a, a better uh, strike output uh, by by quite a, a way. Five point four four significant strikes per minute to three point eight nine. So I'm I'm kind of siding with Hill on this one uh, by decision. A lot of her fights tend to go to, to decision as, as they kind of do mostly in women's MMA. So Angela Hill by decisions is, is my shout at, at 27 to 25 in the, in the UK odds. Uh, how are you seeing it? Um, I'm exactly the same as you, Sam. I don't mean to be boring. I do like a different opinion and we can go off each other. I had the exact same pick. I think Luana Pinheiro has not been too impressive. Like you said, her record looks a lot more impressive than Angela Hill. But Angela Hill, as you said, I don't want to repeat uh, what you've rightly said. It's just for every single person imaginable in the uh, in the top fifteen, um, she, she's a solid fighter. I think she's that gatekeeper of that division. Uh, she's she, she's got a nice output, nice hands. Doesn't knock you out, but just keeps it going. I think she's definitely beatable, Hill, but I don't think Pinheiro's got the game to beat her. So I'm going, yeah, same as you, Sam Angela Hill, by decision. Nice. Two ticks in the boxes. I like <laughs> it. The next fight, we've got Adrian Yanez versus Viniscus Salvador. Um, interesting one here, Sam. Where are you going? Yeah, I'm, I'm probably more siding towards Yanez, I think. Um, you know, was in good form. He's on a, a two fight skid at the moment. He went five and zero in the UFC. The UFC were, were kind of building him up. Um, he, he got a shot at uh, Rob Font last April. Maybe probably a little bit too early to to come up against someone like 
like Rob Font, uh, who again, you know, like you like mentioned with Hill, is kind of a, you know, a bit of a gatekeeper these days. If you if you can get past Rob Font, then you you're well on your way to to kind of knocking on the door of uh, of kind of the top five of of the division. So. Yeah, Yanez, he's still young. He's 30 years old. He's he's learning. He is on that two-fight skid, as I said. Not only that uh, loss to Rob Font, but he also lost to Jonathan Martinez uh, as well. Stopped uh, by leg kicks against Martinez, as we mentioned on our, our first show uh, a few weeks ago um, against uh, Jose Aldo. Um, he fought last time out uh, was his reward for, for beating Yanez. Um, so... But I think Giannis can get back to business. You know, here he's you know, he's a he's a good striker. Uh, these two uh, are quite evenly matched, same height, same reach. So there's no massive advantage uh, for for either. But I just think Giannis is the is the busier guy. He's got the 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 better striking. Uh, and I think you know against Vinicius Salvador, he's, he's 27. He's he's not won a fight yet in the UFC. He's zero and two. He's been campaigning at flyweight, even though he's a, a, a career bantamweight. So back at 135. Now in his more natural weight class, uh, maybe you know he, he tried to get an advantage by going down. It's not quite worked out for him. Maybe he was losing too much weight, so maybe he has that kind of advantage coming back up, you know, a bit more natural. Uh, he is a southpaw uh, as well, which I think is is kind of his main tick in, in the box. Uh, the fact that Yanez struggled so badly last time against Martinez. Uh, but I listened to his media day interview and he said he did try and change it up too much against Martin as he switched his stance up a, a little bit too much. And he won't be doing that that again and, and kind of fell foul and, and made a mistake by by trying to ad adapt too much to um, to a southpaw. So I'm, I'm backing Yanez to get back back in the wing column. Um, Salvador's been, been knocked out a couple of times, uh, not in, in the UFC, but on the regional scene. So I'm, I'm going Yanez, uh, KO, TKO. Um, DQ uh, as as the bet states that uh, ten to eleven. Yeah, um, I like it again, Sam. I, I feel like it's going to be the uh, agree with each other show at the moment. <laughs> uh, I'm I'm exactly with you. I think the the, the UFC obviously really like Yanez. I don't know why. I don't know what's gone on internally, but he's one of the. Uh, he's a Dana White favorite. He's got Dana White privilege, as we uh, <laughs> famously been said. He's he's been given a layup here, Sam. I think someone who's been uh, like said hyped about. I think they had big aspirations for him. It's not quite worked out the last couple of fights, and um, I think that I don't, no disrespect to Vinicius Salvador, he beat me in every single way, but. <laughs> But Yanez, this is a layup for Yanez. Get back on, get a highlight knockout, and get back in them rankings higher up where he can uh, make his name for himself and go uh, rise up again. Um, yeah, I think I think this is Dana, a bit of Dana White privilege. Sam, what do you think? Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm with you there. Yeah, like you said, Yanez has, has yeah, he's got a little bit about him, hasn't he? He's he's kind of. Um... Yeah, a bit young, young and flashy. Um, uh, you know, he's he's kind of attractive to the to the sponsors and things like that. He's got a good style, so yeah, I think yeah, get get him a win back, um, and then yeah, as you said, uh, can can steamroll forward uh, and you know maybe knock on the door again uh, of that kind of uh, top top ten in the next you know before the end of the year certainly. Yeah. Um, next fight, Sam. We have got. Femba Garimbo versus Ramiz Brahami Maj. And I've butchered the name again. That's a really <laughs> joke on the show. That I can't get it <laughs> right. But <laughs> where are you going with this one? Sam Rock's favourite fighter. Where are you going? Uh, yeah, I think it's. I, I would, yeah, more side towards uh, Garimbo, I, I think. 33 years old. He's on a two fight win streak in the UFC, two and one now. Uh, since he since he signed with the UFC, he got a stoppage uh, for first round last time out against uh, Pete Rodriguez. Uh, as you said, he's got a great story. Uh, Themba, you know, seven dollars left in his bank account. Uh, you know, when he won that fight uh, last year, when he won his first UFC fight, was was worried about getting caught. Um, wins the fight, yeah, you know, and, and um, you know, kicks on from there. Does this, you know, emotional interview at, at, at the end, and you know, uh, the Rock ends up buying him a house uh, off the back of it. You know, he's sleeping in the gym uh, at MMA, MMA Masters. Colby Covington was was bringing him meals from his nutritionist, so you know, he was that that archetypal down and out fighter, just looking for that that small break. And he seems to have got it in a massive way now. So you know, he, his training will have gone up, 
you know, tenfold, you know, settled now in a, in a house, uh, thanks to old Dwayne. Uh, you know, and I'm sure Kobe Covington isn't sharing those meals uh, anymore. He's he's kind of got himself uh, sorted. Um, is a little bit emotional though, as well, isn't he? Like he's come out with those 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 stories in the media days. This this week he was you know had an emotional story again. His wrestling coach over from South Africa, who, his mother had cancer. He didn't tell him how bad it was, uh, and then his coach's mother's actually died this at the start of fight week. Um, and you know he's hoping he, that he, he'd be able to go back over to South Africa uh, with him uh, at, at the end, you know, next week to, to visit his, his mother. But she's actually passed away. You know, he, he kind of broke down uh, in, in the media day, you know, quite badly at Themba. So you know he's fighting on emotion. He's he wants to do this for for his coach and you know the sacrifice that that he's made uh, during this this fight camp. Uh, and as long as he can keep that emotion in check, you know, I do fancy him here. He's got good potential. He's you know. Good striking accuracy. He's got a good reach advantage here, five inch reach. TKO last time out. He's got a, a good takedown defense as well, 66% uh, against uh, Ramesh uh, Brahimai. I think it's, it is, but not 100% sure. He's not been seen for a while, not fought since February 2022. He's had an injury to come back from. Two and two in the UFC, two uh, submission wins in his uh, UFC Ws, but uh, I think. Uh, Grimbo is going to have too much for him here. And, you know, he's not the best striker either. Badly outstruck by Max Griffin, uh, which he lost by TKO in the third round and caught McGee as well, which was a, a unanimous decision defeat. You know, the stats on those, you, you know, he, he, he didn't look anything like a, a decent striker. So I think Grimbo here, again, <laughs> going to go for the, the, the KO, TKO uh, shout, 10 to 3, which I don't think is bad odds on, on him, really, seeing as he, you know, he's coming up against the guy who's not a striker, he's not fought for a couple of years, and Garimbo got a, a stoppage last time out as well. So I think that's, that's a, a, a good little shout for, for Garimbo to, to carry it on. Yeah, get you, Sam. Yeah, there's not quite hard to do um, some research from him. He's like you said, he's been, uh, he's not been fighting much, lost to Court McGee. Um, I think if you're losing to Court McGee, you're uh, you're in you're in a bit of trouble in the UFC. Uh, Court McGee is a stalwart of that bottom end uh, welterweight division, and he's lost. He's not been fighting. I think Fember's got the story. He's got the emotion. Uh, like you said, you always worry about um, his takedown defence, but he's in the right gym. To be fair to Colby Covington, the one compliment I will give him is his wrestling, his high energy, his output. Uh, if Fember can bring that to um, Burmese today, uh, today, <laughs> tomorrow, and match him in, the, match him in that energy and uh, wrestle department with having people like Colby in his team, I think he gets this one done comfortably. He's got the story. The UFC are ready to pump this around even more. The Rock's part of um, the, the partner company of um, who bought UFC. He's now a thing of. Um, so I think it's all in on this Fember getting the storyline. They give him a layup of a, a guy who doesn't fight that often, who's had a few losses. Uh, like I said, is if he can keep if he can keep it all in check, all that emotion and handle it, which we've seen he's had a loss, but we've he's he's done okay, and I think he'll get the win today. They'll we'll see it all over social media. The rocks the rock star has got another win, uh, and I think that's the uh, social media highlight of the night. So. Mm. Yeah, hundred percent. Yeah, I think it's yeah. It's, if he does get the the win, he is going to be emotional, and then yeah, it's it's another kind of viral clip that goes around uh, of him, and then yeah, he's he's kind of ready for the for that that maybe breakout fight, um, maybe on a pay per view later in the year. So yeah, Thember Garimbo is that another tick in the box? Another for, tick for both. The, you you, uh, you going? Can you get a stoppage, or are you, are you going to go? Um, the distance? Uh, I. I d I've not seen enough of Ramiz's uh, stand up altogether um, to say whether he gets stoppage. Or I'll go stoppage with you, Sam. I'll double up on the stoppage, and we'll, uh, like you said, we'll agree on all the fights so far. And I think if you're better watching this, uh, we're pretty we're pretty confident. Three out of three, get the treble on and uh, get yourself a bit of uh, easy catch because I think they I think they're three pretty confident uh, bets we've chucked in there. So like it. Right, we've got the co-main event of the evening, Sam. We've got Kayleen Chaos Williams versus Carlston Harrison. Uh, Carlston Harris. Um, Sam, take us through your thoughts. Mm, yeah, I think this is where it maybe gets interesting. I'm, 
a bit flip floppy on on this one. Uh, Chaos Williams, thirty years old, five and two in the UFC. His defeats to Randy Brown uh, and Michelle Pereira uh, as well, welterweight Michelle Pereira. Uh, but that was by decision, uh, and obviously we've, we've seen Pereira, you know, since he dropped down, uh, you know, to one seventy, he was pretty much smashed past everybody, uh, you know, barring Chaos Williams going to decision. So. Um, uh, that, that, that's almost a small win <laughs> in itself with the form that Pereira's uh, been in. Uh, a split win uh, over R- R- Ronaldo uh, Bayorda last time out uh, in May. He, he's kind of only fighting once a year, 2023 and 2022, just just one fight. Uh, he said he's been getting uh, things in order, Not, no injuries. Uh, he just had a couple of um, early uh, bonuses uh, and has kind of decided to, to kind of invest and sort his, his life out a, a little bit. Um, around fighting, so he, he's not been too active, Chaos Williams, which is, I suppose, maybe a, a slight, a, a slight worry uh, for me. I do, I do like a bit of activity, um, but he is, he is kind of getting some some wins. So, uh, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm kind of not 100. He has a good takedown uh, defense. He's only been taken down twice in his career, and that was by Pereira uh, as as well. He, I think he's um, a better striker. Than uh, Carlson Harris certainly has the the volume uh, on him five point seven seven significant strikes landed per minute to Harris's two point nine three. I think we're still learning a lot about Harris uh, as well. He's got five fights here in the UFC, um, four and one, uh, but his first three didn't get out of the first round. So we've not seen too much of him. He won, won by TKO uh, and a, and a sub, uh, and he lost to uh, Shavkat Rav uh, Ratmanov as well uh, early doors in a defeat as well. Uh, so, last time we saw him, Anaconda Choke, round fini- uh, third round finish over Jeremiah Wells. That was in August last year. But I think that the law strike rate concerns me, yeah, because I think you know, Williams has, has got a good takedown defense. And I think if this ends up you know, on the feet, that he, he's going to have too much for him. So, I'm, I'm siding with Chaos Williams uh, for this one. Um, but, yeah, it's, it's an interesting fight. If, if Harris can can... can dictate it a little bit and, and get some wrestling and, and grappling and, and maybe with Williams inactivity, you know, maybe he will uh, be able to get a little bit of joy. But I think if Williams is, is, is fresh, he's that kind of guy that I think only fights when he's, you know, he's hundred uh, percent. I think maybe like, like we saw with Ferreira last week uh, when we were kind of questioning him at, at 39, you know, not fought too many times that he only makes it to the to the octagon when he when he's absolutely on point these days and i think that's that's maybe the same for for williams uh, as well he's not he's not willing to take the risk if he's got a couple of little niggles and and, and injuries so i'm going williams for this one i like it Sam. there we go first first disagreement on the uh, on the night uh, go on <laughs> i'm going to go carlson harris i think he's got too i think he's just got a bit too much in the wrestling grappling department i've never been in, too impressed with chaos as williams's grappling like you said he's not had too many takedowns he's a highlight he's got some highlight tkos and knockouts uh but harris has only lost his to rachmanov and obviously we know how good rachmanov is future title contender probably even maybe later this year probably early next year he will be around that type of contention um like i said harris's output's not brilliant chaos william that might open up a few opportunities for williams but i think i think harris gets it done i think he just gets it done in that third round i'm gonna go submission in the third round uh grinds him down uh chaos williams opens himself up he's, he's not got the sharpest I don't think he's got the sharpest stand-up chaos Williams. He's obviously a big, strong dude, very athletic, very strong, powerful. But um, I think Carlston, I think Carlson, in my opinion, just maybe have a bit too much for him and gets a third round uh, TKO or submission. But I'm going to go with the submission. Uh, rear naked choke in the third round. Um, and gets get, Just gets on top of chaos Williams and uh, goes on to uh, get back in the top 10 uh, rankings from there. Nice, like it. Yeah, it is a good fight though. I really like. I really like this one. Looking forward to, to seeing it. Yeah, and it's hard to split them. But yeah, there we go. First, first disagreement. Like you said, it's a, it's a in. yeah, it's it's a tough one though, isn't it? Because it's it's such a close fight. So uh, I think better just have your fun. Don't bet too much on this one, and uh, go have your pick and see which uh, see which way it goes. It should be a fun, interesting fight anyway. 
And then here we are, Sam. We're at it, the main event, the featherweight fight. Edson Barboza versus Lerone Murphy. Take us through it. Mm. Yeah, this is an interesting one. As we said at the the stop, the, the top of the show, Edson Barboza, you know, a living legend, extensive UFC record, you know, 18 and 11. This is going to be his 30th UFC fight in another main event. Obviously, we've seen him campaign mainly as a as a lightweight. Now at bantamweight, four and three uh, in this new division. Took him a little while to to find a bit of form, um, but he he has done over kind of the last few fights. He's on a, a two fight win streak. Uh, beat Sadiq Youssef, you know, in a similar kind of matchup to this one against uh, Murphy, another rising prospect. Five round main event uh, in in the apex and used all of his experience in that fight to get the job done. Youssef came out like a train, you know, nearly knocked him out in the first round a couple of times in, in that first round. He had Barbosa in a real bad way, uh, but used every inch of his experience to, to kind of get through the, the storm there. And then as the fight progressed, third round, you know, almost knocked him out with that famous spinning wheel kick, had him wobbled. Uh, and then from there, saw the fight out in the, you know, in the fourth and, and the fifth to, to get the win. Uh, on the night and, and kind of sucked the life out of, of Yusuf the longer the fight went. But I don't know about this one, whether, you know, Lerone Murphy's a bit more of a patient guy, uh, definitely, you know, likes a slower pace. I think he's going to come out in the first round and try and put Barboza away. You know, he, he's going to he's gonna fight on the back foot. He's, he's going to be a little more patient, uh, Lerone uh, Murphy. He's 32 years old now, probably needs to step on the gas a little bit. He's fifth year in the UFC. He has been unlucky with with some injuries. Obviously, had a real bad one when he was knocked off his bike uh, in 2022. Uh, nearly died, you know, back back then in in a you know, real severe accident that that he suffered. But he has had quite a few little niggly injuries and quite a few little uh, things that have stopped his and slowed down his his progress. Uh, but he is unbeaten, five uh, and zero uh, with one draw as well in in his debut over in you know, Abu Dhabi in a fight where you know he, he arguably you know should have won uh, that night. Um, you know he's a well-rounded fighter, not the you know the most massive of of output, uh, but does have a, a couple of couple of good finishing uh, finishes on his his record. And I don't think he's going to be too concerned about going the five rounds and and the longer it goes, I think he might actually grow into the fight a little bit more. Whereas kind of Yusuf blew his load early doors uh, and that allowed Barboza to use his experience. I think Murphy's going to be a lot more patient. It's just whether you know Barboza has enough in the the tank to go out and uh, and real put it on him and uh, and kind of get the finish because I think Murphy is is going to last here and I think he's going to be chipping away all the way through so it, it's an interesting one for me obviously we've, we've seen Barboza so many highlight reel KOs that the Terry and one the neon Darius as well but obviously not the same guy now at, at, at this age but still very very dangerous I'm gonna side I think just with Lerone Murphy just probably a bit of UK bias uh, and want him to see him kind of progress and, and do well um, but I think it's a tough fight. But I think the fact that he, he's not like Yusuf, he's not going to come out like a train. He's going to be a little more patient. He's going to find his feet in the fight. And I think he's going to grow into it the, the longer it goes. So I'm I'm going to side with Murphy. I'm just, I'm just going to go for the win, uh, seven to ten. But I, I, I just, yeah, I just got a feeling that he, he might just just upset the party on this one. Yeah, I'm, uh, yeah it's an interesting one. So I mean, I think... For your point on Lerone Murphy, that's the reason I've probably been a bit frustrated watching him. You want him to take the reins, mm. really go for it and step up that output, but he's he's so calm, he's very patient, he lets the opponent come to him. Uh, that scares me, uh, to be honest. That scares me against Barbosa. He's not Barbosa is one of the one of the fighters that you don't want to give him time. You don't want to give him time. To just he's got very powerful kicks. You want to be in him. You want to be not giving him any space to get off them kicks. Wrestling, obviously, he, he famously doesn't do that well against wrestlers anymore. Um, so he, he, you want to get into him, even high output strikers. He doesn't do that well against because you just keep that pressure on. You don't let him start setting up them incredibly powerful kicks. Obviously, we've seen that many kick highlights from him that it's fair play to, like you said, a legend. Uh, that scares me for Murphy. So I think we're going to find out how good... Uh, Murphy is. Um, I've got to go with the Murphy win. I love UK fighters in the UFC. I love UK fighting, main eventing. Um, like you said, he will start to pick off Barboza, 
what Barbosa will do to him. It's going to be a close fight. I think it's going to be a very close fight. Um, I'm going to go Murphy by TKO, though. I think Barbosa's only getting older. Um, he's had he's had obviously 35 fights now. Um, I think it's going to start to get to him. Um, he's been in some absolute wars, Barbosa. Murphy's not had that same damage, not had that same thing. That chin's that will be that bit more secure, that bit stronger. Um, I'm going to leave Lerone Murphy knockout in round four or five. I know that doesn't help. That doesn't help. The best. <laughs> uh, well, I'm, I'm, edging my, I'm edging my bets and saying uh, round four or five, pick your, pick your poison, pick your one. But I think he'll just pick him off at the end with a with a good uh, TKO. Don't imagine it'd be a one punch knockout, but I think just a gradual uh, grind down as you were, uh, as you described, Sam. Yeah, like it. Yeah, I think Murphy, I, I think as well with him as well, I think he's going to get possibly better that, you know, with a better opposition that he faces. And I, I don't know. I think this, this, this one just feels like, yeah, his, his time. He, he had one, didn't he? I think he had a scheduled, uh, main event with Dan Ige that, that got called off for I think a Murphy injury, shoulder injury. I think that he said um, suffered in, in wrestling practice, and I kind of I maybe prefer that fight for him, the, the Dan Ige one um, that, that he might have been out. That that would have been a a more winnable fight for him with his, with his style. Um, but yeah, I'm 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 like you. I think it's going to be you know razor close. Um, you know. Barbosa is going to have his moments, but I just fancy Murphy to to ride it out uh, and, like you said, maybe get a late finish or, or do enough on the scorecards. Brilliant. And then we've got a, um, I guess, a surprise. We've not, um, well, I think we'll, it will be in the title, uh, but we're going to cover the obviously the main event in the boxing this weekend. It doesn't get bigger than this, so we've got to talk about it. Fury versus U6 Sam. Let's have it. The UK versus the Ukrainian, one of the biggest yeah. fights in heavyweight boxing history. I'm calling it. Uh, give us, give us what you're thinking. Ah, oh, yeah, uh, yeah. Looking forward to this uh, tomorrow night. Uh, Going to be fantastic. Uh, first, was it undisputed heavyweight title since Lewis Holyfield in in 1999. You, know, you just look at both men's records. You know, you know fantastic. Uh, you know what they've managed to achieve. You know, Fury at heavyweight for all these years, you know, the, the story and you know, the journey he's been on, you know, from rising up to to fight Klitschko and win the belt, to have that dramatic fall from grace, you know, with the, the depth of depression and addiction and all that, and then to come back uh, and to get to where, you know, he, he's got to uh, is, you know, an unbelievable uh, story. You know, even still having his ups and downs, as we saw with, you know, with the Ngannou fight last time out, not at his best. Uh, I think that makes this fight even more intriguing that you kind of sometimes don't know which fury it is you're going to get, but it looks a really heavily motivated, super fit Tyson Fury that we're getting this week, uh, seeing everything coming in from from Saudi. Uh, and, and obviously Usyk, you know, he's, you know, fantastic skill, you know, been undisputed before, you know, in his previous weight division, now up at heavyweight, he's beaten, you know, numerous guys. Uh, heavyweight proved himself, you know, beating Joshua twice to to claim the titles, and you know, a phenomenal fighter. Um, you know, brilliant movement, skill, IQ. He's he's got it all. Uh, they both have a little, you know, glimpses of those weaknesses. You can put Fury down. We've seen it multiple times. You know, even against Ungarnu, those ones against Wilder. You're know, going back to Steve Cunningham back in the day. Whereas Usyk, we've seen him hurt to the body. You know, by Joshua, but uh, by Dubois as well. You know, in in that fight uh, that they had last year. So uh, it's it's going to be you know a superb occasion. I, I'm with Fury. I think that the size. I've always been thinking that the size of Fury, uh, that you know, he'd be able to just just lean on him. I think if Joshua could have done that in that in that first fight, you know, in those last that last kind of third quarter of the fight, that he he might have been able to slow you sit down a little bit more, uh, and that he didn't kind of employ that that tactic. But I think Fury, there's going to be loads of leaning, a bit of wrestling. Um, he couldn't get that off last time against Ungarni with the size of him, but he should be able to against Usyk. You'd have thought uh, and work Usyk's body. Uh, we've we've seen it. You know he is vulnerable there, so I'm I'm kind of going with with Fury, but I think you know Usyk's gonna gonna look great for a you know the the first half of the fight, and you know it's it's gonna be a, you know, once we get to halfway, I still think it's gonna be you know a, a wide open wide open fight. Um, yeah, I'm with you. What a fight! Legendary fight! I'm so excited. Um, 
you've got to i'm going fury like i said that size the size is just incredible for fury how he's been bought he's got the strangest body um i've ever seen but perfect body for boxing in the heavyweight division uh give credit to you sick he's one of the most technical heavyweight boxers i've seen over the last couple of years handled handled joshua like i said i did joshua had his moments but hand apple handled joshua um when he music was rising up i thought wow this is this is a proper contender he obviously did fantastic in the uh, division below um and then he's gone on to do what he's doing fiori though what a incredible ambassador for mental health and for everything about boxing he's exciting he talks the talk his dad's a nutcase his family are crazy brings action brings his ball when when you know when there's a fury fight because it's exciting there's a buzz about boxing but boxing loses its buzz in some of the fights but it's it's been on the comeback recently some of the fight nights uh recently in boxing have been absolutely outstanding and this is the top of the bill uh fury gets the win here sam he's too good too big uh, too proficient to what he's done over the years. U6 fantastic fighter, but our man, the English man, is going to uh, become the undisputed heavyweight champion once again. And we will see, uh, we will see the uh, mighty English rise to the top of heavyweight boxing. What, what's your thoughts on a Usyk knockdown? Do you think he can he can knock Fury down? Uh, I think that's that's probably why I'm going Fiori because I, d- I don't think he can Fiori like you said Fiori can get knocked down but I don't know if usyk has got that one punch power he he, he doesn't he, he gets knocked down by them heavy punches obviously someone who can match his size he does give little openings Fiori because of his he keeps it closed and then lets the opponent come to win gets to the body there is one or two big hitters uh, that have knocked him down but I don't think Usyk's that sort of fighter is a technical, proficient fighter. Um, very chucks angles at you. He's like a like I said, he's got that Eastern European style angles. High, fairly high energy, obviously for a heavyweight division. And uh, I just don't think he's got that one punch power that you've got to get to get to Fiori. So I think Fiori is just an opinion. Mm. I love Usyk as a fighter. I think he beats everyone else in the division hands down. But uh, our English man's the uh, best heavyweight uh, in the world. We'll forget about that Garnu fight. I think he obviously <laughs> he was laughing. The uh, I think he thought it was a bit of a piss take, a bit of a laugh, and uh, uh, Garnu actually come to fight. To be fair to him, so I think Fury is a. Uh, I think Fury is ready for this one. I'm actually, I actually like that he's uh, had a bad one against Garnu. It keeps him ready. He looks fittest. He's looked in years since his comeback. Since that one of the first one or two fights from the comeback, uh, I think he's ready, and I think he's going to uh, be the man that he was destined to be, the heavyweight mm. champion yeah. world. Yeah, I do like that. I do like the fact that he has had that, that dodgy performance, uh, and I like as well that it, the the first one was was called off, and it's given Fury that that bit more time. Obviously, you know, hopefully he's, he's recovered enough from the, the cut, but I think it's just given him that extra extra stretch in the in, in the preparation that was the Angarno fight. It was it was quite close together. So I think it's just given him a bit of breathing space. And I think he looks not only physically, but I think mentally he looks he looks better for it uh, as well coming into this this, this fight week. He, you know, he looks like as you said oh, he looks on point. And I think, yeah, he's he's gonna get the job done. Um, but if you do fit, I, I kind of was thinking with the Usyk, yeah, potential knockdown that he might catch him off balance at, at some point and get like a flash knockdown. It's eleven to four for Usyk to get a uh, to get knocked down. Um, Tyson Fury to get knocked down is nine to four. If you think they both hit the canvas, it's a double of nearly twelve to one. Wow. If you fancy Fury to get off the canvas and win, that's eleven to one, which we we have seen. You know, in these some of these top level fights, I, I don't know. I kind of like that a, a, a little bit. The fact that Fury, I, I know what you're saying I, with the the heavy punches, you know, Garnu and um, the wilder ones. But I think one of the wilder ones was a, a little glancing one. Um, and I think he's going to have to, you know, Usyk's going to be in and out. Uh, and you know, Fury, it looks like he's he's trimmed down. That maybe he's going to be, you know, tr- trying to be in and out as well, and, and box a little bit more than we've seen seen of late. So I'm, 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 I'm leaning towards that one. Fury to to get knocked down and, and come back and and win. Maybe to start a bit slowly and then pick up the pace through the fight. 
Well, that's unbelievable. If that's eleven to one, Sam, I'm, I'm going to get on that uh, with you. I've not seen that one. I'm in a state in America at the moment where I can't get the betting odds up, but I'm certainly going to. Uh, I'm certainly going to get that money on eleven to one. I'm not. Yeah, you take it like you said. He has been knocked out down plenty of times. He always gets up, uh, and he always wins that fight. So yeah, definitely worth a pun. Let's go. Come on, Fury. Yeah. All right. We'll finish it off, Sam. Please, uh, please subscribe, like us all on Proper Sport MMA. Obviously, we're still getting going. Um, Apologise about if some of the footage hasn't been brilliant today. It's my fault. I'm in America. The Wi-Fi is not brilliant to where I am. Uh, but so yeah, please like, subscribe. We're going to keep going. We're not going to stop. Good luck, Fury. Good luck, Murphy. The English boys are going to take it home this weekend, Sam. Uh, give us your final send off. Yeah, let's go. Yeah, UK boys, let's let's have it. But yeah, I wonder what I didn't actually look what the the Manchester double was. Leroy Murphy, Manchester born and bred. Fury fought out of Manchester for for many years. He was born that way. The Manchester double. We'll have to have a look at that one. The Manchester Murphy and Fury. <laughs> the Manchester double. Let's have it. Great weekend of fighting for the English crowd. Uh, good luck, everyone, and uh, we will see you uh, going forward. <laughs>